You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash newoldheads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, for Infinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash newoldheads. You are now tuned in to the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major Seven. The crew is in the building. As always, starting off with my man, Jay Moore. How are you, good brother? Doing well, doing well. You know, just... uh you know, watching out for this weather because I'm thinking, okay, finally spring is fighting back. Yeah. I look at the forecast and nah. Yeah. You know, but I'm going to enjoy, you know, this weekend, this weekend regardless. My allergies are on 50 right now, so. See, I'm, I was blessed not to have to worry about the pollen and the mold and all that stuff yeah, that's in the air. Like, I can just keep it moving. Struggling out here in these streets. My man, Longevity. Hi. Hey, buddy. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Yeah? Yeah. Just living my best failed life out here. Oh man, <laughs> trying to Tough do better. Out. You got apparently you have to. So yeah, just, just keep keep pull, keep plugging at it, man. Sorry, we have other choices. Hopefully, I'll stop failing at life soon. Mm-hmm. One day you will be successful. Maybe. Oh, hopefully. Bother. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. You, you just keep working hard. Yeah, yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing, keep man. Pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. bootstraps. Maybe? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be just fine, buddy. We got your back. Okay. Thanks. My man DJ J did. What's happening, man? Sorry, tell you what's happening. Oh man, I can't call. I see you with the fresh take that Tuesday joint anniversary mm-hmm. joint. I see you. All right, yeah. Repping, you know, the, co- repping the culture. The culture got to support. Yeah. Got to support the home Family. team. Family. Yeah, that's fam. Yeah, indeed, no doubt. Indeed. Shout Great out to Jay Moore is actually one of the members here at founding the new old head. So is that safe to say founding member of of uh, um take that Tuesday? I would say so. I you know what? I don't even want to give myself that. Okay, I because, respect it. I know, respect it. Uh, shout out to our man Greg Granite who's been on the show the call um, you know he was the first person to, to be on the microphone there like uh, Nick had, you know in those early days had to be, I wasn't sold on Indianapolis yet I oh. thought at one point I thought yeah I'm probably going to move back home you back to trapping in St. Louis <laughs> yeah that's that's what I was doing <laughs> before I came here I was I was trapping trapping with uh, the mixtapes yeah <laughs> pretty much uh, and uh, you know I was I say this and I, I, th- I believe I said it uh, you know, take that Tuesday is part of the reason I call Indianapolis home. Facts, facts. So, say words. Just word. staple, man. Like you are actually in, you're embedded here now. So, yeah, yeah. That's what they tell me. Yeah, that's man. what they tell me. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get started and talk about some, some one. This is one of Long's favorite uh, things to talk about is uh, good old rap beef and sparring and whatever we was calling it on the last episode. Was and, beef. So. We talked about and broke down J. Cole and that mid project and him. Uh, <laughs> Did we call it, it mid? No, nah, they cool. call it, it, was it cool. mid. I don't think it was, it was cool. Mid. We said the song was just like, all right. Yeah. I thought the disc this was, was mid. Cool. But it anyway, was, anyway. It was, like, Go ahead. it was like the middle child. Mm. You know? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. I see. Jabs. It was cool. I actually posed a question Do we care if. Drake makes a response or hops in and into whatever's going on. And right. it turns out that he actually did with this record called, I believe it's called Push Ups. Now, there is a conversation about the possibility of this being AI. That concept, that concept but I don't has believe already that. been debunked. Yep, I don't believe that. I know it's 100% him. Uh, my initial reaction was, there's some bars in there, but I don't know the Kendrick, the Kendrick haters or the Kendrick people that don't, the cult of people that don't like him are just infatuated. Uh, with his push-ups. And I'm seeing it everywhere. Everybody's sharing it. It's the greatest thing ever. He got cooked. Kendrick's on the clock. What do y'all think, man? Terry, I'm going to come to you first, man. Just in terms of the level of the diss, and is this even, do we even care at this point? Because I feel like the moment may have already passed. Uh, the thing about it is, okay, so we waited about three weeks for this song to come out. It came out. It's about four minutes and some chains long. It got leaked. Well, it got leaked, so to speak. So the I was kind of going to yeah. kind of get to leaked. that. Leaked. So it, it was supposedly leaked. It's still not officially out. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was on DSPs. No, it's no. not officially out because when it first started popping up, there's actually two versions. There's an unmixed version and a mixed version. Mm. When it first started popping up, they were snatching it off the internet. Right. Like it was this big, you know what I'm saying, ordeal. Like they did with your remix of that Kanye record? Yeah, after yeah. two yeah, hours. But, but who's snatching it, who's putting it up and snatching it down is essentially the same person. Yeah. This is kind of like a marketing thing in my my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. And you're not necessarily standing on business if you can't fess up to this being your song. Even four or five days after the fact that it's been out. You've kind of alluded to it being yours, but that's neither here nor there. As far as the bars are concerned, he skated on there. 
I, I give him that a little bit. And but, it wasn't just Kendrick either. No, nah, it wasn't. He he addressed with three, four people, mm-hmm. um, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? He he did what he was supposed to do. My whole thing is at the end of the day, and I still stand on this. Kendrick dropped 30, 40 seconds, and it's still topping everything that's came out because of the replay value. It's mm-hmm. still being played every single day. The point. These other songs, yeah, got everybody that's Drake's fans hype and in a tizzy because Drake has said something. But what we're doing is actually moving the goalposts towards Drake because, like, another song came out that's supposedly AI from Kendrick. Yeah, that, I think it's been confirmed that was AI. Okay, so now they're saying since it didn't get the traction, it was supposed. This, these are Drake fans talking. Is that the new? Sh- they, oh, yeah. it, that, since it didn't get the traction, it, it's AI. Now we're saying it's, it's AI. AI. Wow. But. You did the same thing, though. <laughs> Thank you. So you put we thought that was AI, too. You, you did the same thing since people hyped it up. Now it kind of backed off it being AI. And now, even though you haven't went ahead and said that you did it, you haven't been trying to walk it back. So if it was AI and somebody else was getting paid off of streaming your song or whatever, however that works, then you would have said something or did something about it. But this made it in the hands of academics. It made it in the hand of uh, uh, Maul and... Uh, Rory. Rory. Mm -hmm. And they actually addressed it last week before it came out. They were talking about the song. They were alluding to it by saying certain things that was in the song before it came out. And obviously, Joe Budden must have heard it, too. He definitely did. You could tell by his read. Right. So he had heard it and he kind of big it up and all that stuff. But, I mean, Drake did what he was supposed to do as far as actually answering. But is it too little too late? And not to mention, Kendrick has been getting at Drake for 10 plus years now. (laughs) You got it on the BET so, cipher. Yeah, come on, man. And, and not all of them were like subtle joints. Some of these were out in the open. I'm coming directly at you. Yeah. And we've never heard anything. Nah. Nothing. Then, then Rick Ross jumped in the battle. What Rick was that Ross, about? That's what I was going to ask. Said, it's not I mean, AI. I'm putting this on the DSP. Drake said something to him. What did Drake? There was did a you not listen to the disc? I listened, but I must have. I was so he, hyped to see what he was going to say he about addressed, Kendrick. He addressed Rick Ross in there. Okay, okay. All right. He addressed Rick Ross. He addressed... Uh, called Metro Boom, Booming a Metro little, Boomin. little beat, little drummer or something. Yeah, he addressed, uh, of course, uh, Future. <laughs> mm-hmm. He addressed Rick Ross, Kendrick. <laughs> he addressed everybody. They pretty much said something. Caught it 20 versus 1. <laughs> but call it what you want. Rick Ross's stuff is kind of funny to me. No, it is funny. Which I, It is. How you make every, Drake, everything but, that you put out rich... And it's, even the disc records be like rich and extravagant as I'm as you trying to di- quote unquote diss somebody. I mean, didn't Terry? I mean, for it didn't Terry? Didn't you just say that now they're arguing over whose house is bigger? Yeah, like, he literally said yeah, that. See, yeah, now this is like, where what it gets are we corny. Doing? That's <laughs> corny. That's 100 percent corny. That's they're corny. Like trading, they're trading pretty much inbox posts with each other and just, posting them. Just, just get together, kiss and make up, make yeah, another song. Yeah, yeah. I did find it quite entertaining when uh, Drake <laughs> told Metro Boom to. To shut your ass up and and, and make some drums. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! These are things that really would hurt a producer's yeah. feelings. <laughs> and then to add to the petty, he actually sent the drum line to the front of Magic City Strip Club <laughs> yeah. like yesterday or something like that. That's that's kind of cool. I yeah, like that. There was like four or five lines that Drake had in that three minute song where yeah. I was like, that's kind of cool. Kendrick still won, man. At the end of the day, in my well, personal opinion, you you talked about the part about the one the replay value, but. I don't know if I've seen a situation where a 16 has started this big of a fire. It's only one 16 on a record. And troll. Yes. Yeah. He's He's done longer it. than that, though. Yeah. Control no, he, Kendrick's done it more than once. He blacked out. That control was like three minutes, though. What he blacked he out snapped. on the BET Cypher, though. He did. Look, he this did. is the thing. Black, he blacked out so serious on control, we forget that Jay Electronica was even on that song. Come on. And Big Sean. Was Big Sean on it? Oh, that's right. Big yeah. Sean was on there, yeah. I don't, I don't know who else was on but it. this verse this this just said but just for a 16 on a feature just a 16 on a feature to start all of this he doesn't have to me he's still in the driver's seat he doesn't have to say a word you know Drake said that it's been going on since before this song on the song that he allegedly had never dropped or whatever's going on with it well I don't know man a moment might have I thought Cole was in the right spot to just that's what right we all wanted I wanted I wanted the Kendrick J. Cole battle to jump off and uh, now we're here. I mean, of course, Drake had to have said something. But f- now we got all these other people in it, too. And it's kind of muddying it up and turning corny. Well, I, you know, honestly, with uh, how serious it got just randomly on a Saturday afternoon, I can see where J. Cole's like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I don't want to get involved in this. Yeah. 
Maybe clearly maybe, he didn't. Maybe for the people who are like, man, come on, J. Cole, you let us down. I was like, no, nah, he, he he might have done the right thing. He should just not say nothing. Yeah. yeah, I think that's was that was his point. Yeah, should have never jumped in there to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I think, and I think that's like I said last week. I think that's all it is. He's just like, man, why did I do this? Yeah, now, I now I Drake is it. looking like a like he like the knight in shining armor that came and and picked up the sword to carry on. Man, I've never my. <laughs> You gotta come there, harder though. There are so many Balone, there's so said. many people <laughs> there's so many people that they're making it seem monumental. Like he said, the Knight in Shining Shining Armor is a great example. Because it's like he rode in on a white horse and just wiped out everybody. And I'm me, like, fam. Let me explain the irony. It's a lot of people who don't really care about lyricism trying to say that the lyricism that Drake has is so much better than Kendrick's. You don't yes. listen to lyrics. No. Thank you, Lone. That's Thank crazy. you. It's crazy how you don't listen to lyrics. I couldn't have said him, Except when it when it's <laughs> oh, benefits you God, to say man. that these lyrics are better. I've <laughs> All right. You get my blood pressure up now because the people that are making the most about this don't pay attention to lyrics. Yes. Supposedly. Like, you hate lyrics. Like, you talk against people that can rap well. That's, I wouldn't say hate. I wouldn't well, say hate lyrics. Hate might be too strong, but you tend to address troll or whatever you, you want to call it. Downplay the downplay. art of lyricism. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, if that's your whole existence, why do you care so much about what's going on now? I'm confused by that. I don't know. I, you know, because when he said Chip and Dale, he was talking about Pluto. Which is the dog future, the dog. So that's talking about him, and they always play tricks on on Pluto in the cartoon and blah blah blah. And I'm trying was, to make Drake so deep. And, and the I was called for the dogs. Hey, nah, the Kendrick don't forget line, about the rescue man. Ranger. I still. <laughs> hey, the line all uh, the, the line when Kendrick ended his verse with all the dogs getting buried. Mm -hmm. They go uh, K with all these nines. They gonna see Pet Cemetery is the hardest line out of everything that's came out. Sorry. Look, you got to understand. Drake is from Toronto. Sure is. Nice in, a, a nice situation in Toronto. I'm not begrudging him that because I grew up in a very nice situation myself. He's probably from Mississauga. He's probably from a suburb. Um, He's from Degrassi. Cole, you know, Fayetteville. Yep. You know, I know there's, there's, a, there's a rough part of everywhere you, in, in America. So 100%. maybe Fayetteville, you know, got some killers out there. But Kendrick is from Compton. Yeah. Compton, Compton. And Compton has a legacy of letting people know on these records. Yeah, man. And there's an aggressiveness, even with all of his therapy, even with all of his, you know, trying to be a better person, Compton's going to come see you. And yeah. you, you just, and a lot of y'all, yeah. you know, you think it's all good and then Compton comes sees you. And that's when J. Cole's like, you know what, man, it don't sit right in my spirit. I'm going to chill. I don't think chill. he was going to go there, but I see what you're saying. No, I'm not, I'm not even talking about from, no, no violence and confrontational, but you know, Ice Cube is from Compton. Yeah. And Ice Cube true. took out his own group who was from Compton. Yeah. No, so they you, didn't you, respond. Yeah. So you, you think, if you think. Uh, Kendrick is gonna, you know, is gonna ease up on people who aren't even from around here. Come on, and when man. you say I say from around here, from around his way, you gotta understand these dudes from Compton are just yeah. different. And then the main point that Drake was trying to make is the whole Kendrick is pretty much being pimped by his record label, and he's yeah. making him do these songs that he doesn't want to do. He's he's hopping on songs with Maroon Five, Taylor Swift, Taylor and, Swift, yeah. and he has to cut the check to to uh, TDE and. So he's not on TDE anymore. Has been Thank for you. a while. Yeah, so you. it's almost like and bad blood slaps. It's mute. It's it's a mute point at this. I mean, even if that was a situation, because you're you've been in a similar situation. If it's not the same right now, well, because Drake, you have a lot of cuts and people that that are in yeah. your pocket as well. Drake Max. is Drake is if it's like we talked about this before. Drake saying this doesn't make any sense because he's more of what he's calling Kendrick than what Kendrick is. Universal go. cash money. What is he, it? Like he's, he's young he, money. Young money. He's making it appear it's a lot that, of slashes in that's your contract. What I'm saying, bro, yeah. he's he's making it seem like his product isn't being chopped down like everybody else's would be. Like it's not. You don't own it. Like it's not solely you that's doing all this. Like Drake is going to call another rap artist a pop star, bro. Yeah, that's like, crazy. What? Are, so you? And this is a bar. So like, your ang what? your angle to go against Kendrick Lamar as Drake is to call him out about doing features. 
You're the person that's talking about Please, that? Because if, if Drake could get himself a, a Taylor Swift feature, you don't think he would jump Come on, on that? Man. Drake Come do, on now. Drake could do anything. Kanye want a Taylor Swift feature right now. I want a Taylor Swift feature. Yeah. Well, we mean, support you, too. Yeah, I don't know exactly. what going to be. Give me but, a Taylor Swift. Get me, uh, get me out of the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if Jay, I got dreams, too. I don't hey. care if Jay Moore is the, 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 the damn bartender in the video. I'll, I'll do care. something. Hey, yeah, cut that check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jay Moore. I go, I, I go on tour, do a little show, do my little feature. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> Come back here with the bag, be a roadie. Yeah, exactly, I do something. I ain't Ski. Mad. Hey. <laughs> we might have a better chance of making that happen. No, no, no. We Jay don't. Moore. I want you to. I've said too much on this show. No, no, for no, that no. To happen. Hey, we want you to. Hey, that's fifty pieces of silver that I would not judge you for, mm-hmm. sir. If you brought that, brought that on back to the Did hood. You say fifty pieces of silver. Yeah. He'll take it. I've, yeah, I've referred to yeah. people taking the 50 pieces of silver. That, that's 50 pieces of silver that I would look, I said that to somebody. I, I they're like, you mean the shekels? There. I was like, oh, yeah, but I didn't, yep. I didn't realize anybody was going yeah, to I'm looking that. that way when you take that 50 because I know it's going to pay dividends. I come back, I have Taylor Swift t shirt for all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the merch. <laughs> we wear that. Screw the merch. I want a satchel of money. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll a satchel <laughs> of silver, man. We will, we'll, wear, we'll wear it on a show. All we really need is for her to put on a new old head t shirt or a hat or something. So, hey, we we get get we one hit. of Travis Kelsey. We'd be so happy. We Man, said, yeah. I wonder what I wonder what our follower spike would be if Taylor Crazy. Swift just rocked a new old heads t shirt for however long. Mm, Charlie yeah. needs to wear it for five minutes. Yeah, and the picture just get a picture. Yeah, just wear it. Just wear it to a Kansas City Chiefs game where Travis Kelsey catches two or three touchdowns. We'd be all right. Yeah, that's well, it. We, yeah. We, we might jump up. We might go through the roof. It'll be a whole article written the next day. Who are the, the new, new old heads? heads that were on <laughs> yeah, Jay Moore, shirt. get on that because I, I'm tired of being a failure out here. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to move out of the ghetto. <laughs> yeah, man. That's two things that we have accomplished on this show thus far tonight. Lone is a failure and Jay Moore wants to get out the ghetto. I'm tired of eating man. beans and rice. I'm yeah. trying to, I want, you know, I want a steak with mine. Yeah. You don't want no potted meat anymore. <laughs> She's done Not with that. potted meat. Hey, you have to be of a certain age. I don't want to say age because Just potted meat is throwback Demographic to me. even. Demographic. Shouts yes. to my homie Kenny Blanco. Man, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Shout out to Kenny Blanco. Kenny Blanco. There's a story with potted meat and potted yeah, meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah. about. <laughs> it's too much to get into. It either. is. It is. Potted, to, potted meat really is trash, though. But everybody's you, had depends it. Depends on how you freak it. I don't know if I agree with this. Lupe is someone that will be qualified to say such. But there is a. An interview that he was with, there was some audio was leaked where he was talking about comparing Kendrick and Drake. Mm-hmm. Now, Lupe, if anybody's qualified from a lyrical standpoint or a rapper, he's qualified. We talking about like God level, top tier MC, in my personal opinion, love Lupe. All time great. But he says that he thinks, because the gentleman was asking him, do you look at Lupe, uh, Kendrick as a scary MC lyrically? Do you think he's a scary MC? He said, nah. And then he said the exact bar was, I think Kendrick is a better technically skilled performer, but I don't think he's a better rapper. So when I hear technically skilled performer, I think that goes into levels of what we talk about when we talk about artists, creatives, the whole. What Lupe in pretty much encompasses. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Didn't Lupe say his favorite rapper was Ja Rule? At one point in time, he actually answered that. He did answer that. Uh, he he answered us on that one. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Comment section. Yeah. yeah, he answered us on that one. And he said he sticks by it, so. But, I mean, he's also, Lupe has, when Control came out, said that it really wasn't all that. So it's like, it's I'm not saying. It's consistent. I'm not saying he doesn't, he has a vendetta against Kendrick or anything I like kind of that. Agree. I never thought. I'll be honest. I never thought the Control verse was what everybody made it to be either. It was just because he was talking, you know what I'm saying, broadly. Yeah, more Shit. about the name drops. At the end of the day, yeah, name dropping and pretty much got on the track. That, <laughs> Saying I'm the king featured. of New York. Yeah, I'm featured on this track, and I'm telling you, I'm better than all y'all. It was a ballsy move. I'm yeah, a, I'm I guess. A on I guess to Terry's point, the technically skilled part coming from Lupe is a little weird because, like you said, he's. Like he's that he They're just kind of cut from the same type of cloth. I he mean, just I, raps exceptionally, exceptionally well while being the technically skilled and all the rest of the stuff. He has the concepts, the cool, like all this stuff. Like he's actually the person that I think he's trying to maybe paint Kendrick as. I don't know. I'm just going off the vibe of what he was saying. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree or not. I mean, Lupe is definitely qualified to speak that, on it. You know part, what I mean? So uh, that part, uh, maybe he's speaking on it from a. At an angle that I'm not familiar. I mean, I heard what you said, but mm-hmm. but 
I mean, I, I've never really thought Kendrick to be this super duper lyrical rapper like Lupe. No, he's I wouldn't not. say that I've either. never he's thought not. that. He's not. And when Drake does rap, Drake does rap really well, typically when he tries to rap super well. So True, true. And, and maybe, and I would say that he uses more similes and stuff like clever similes than what maybe Kendrick would do. Kendrick is more metaphorical. Um, and, and I think... Uh, Storytelling, Kendrick got him. For sure. He's more, Kendrick is more metaphorical and I think Drake is less metaphorical. He's more in your face, kind of like a, kind of like what a little Lil Wayne is in a way. Punchlines. Punchlines and yeah, stuff like punch that. Yeah. Kendrick doesn't really hit you with crazy punchlines. Because like some, someone uh, posed the question to me. Maybe that's what he means. Yeah. I, I, think, I guess is what I'm. I think that's where he's going. And somebody asked me, they said, well, name your favorite Kendrick punchline. I'm like, it's not big three. It's big me. <laughs> it's like but I start but uh-huh. I start I start thinking about it I'm like I don't know if I have a punchline but his discography is better than everybody else's so I don't know like yeah I He's not really a punchline rapper. No, he's not. You know what I mean? And so, like, I think that's just probably what he's alluding to, would be my guess. Because he did say, he was like, yeah, Drake is more dangerous. And I, I, knowing Lupe, he's like, he's just a better at what you're talking about. Yeah. And that probably appeals to him better because Lupe is already a monster. But so. I think I probably personally <laughs> would disagree that Drake is more dangerous than Kendrick. And I think Kendrick has showed us that. Hey, yeah, I think he showed us that too. I think he's uh, multiple, I, t- multiple times. He's yeah. popped out multiple times. Because there's nothing that I've heard from Drake from a lyrical, <clears throat> dangerous standpoint, like no. in this type of situation where it's like he just shut everything down. Kendrick has, like you said, even if even if I don't think the control verse was as crazy as everybody says it was, he did kind of shut everything down. Everything down. It. Maybe he it was, did. Maybe everything. Was, uh, Drake. Drake has backed down. I mean, he backed down from Pusha T. I don't care how how you cut it, whether Pusha T is as successful as Drake is. Pusha T handing him his walking papers, and right. he didn't. He really ain't said nothing since. Facts. And, <laughs> I mean, Kendrick has, I mean, I guess you can call it baiting him or literally calling him out for a while now. Mm-hmm. I mean, when he was talking about uh, uh, the rollout on To Pimp a Butterfly, mm-hmm. that first song was addressing Drake. You know what I'm saying? And Drake addressing uh, Ghost Riders and all that stuff, he has yet to say anything until three days ago. And everybody's, oh, Kendrick got to hurry up and respond. It took him 10 years to respond. You know, all these people at one point were friends. You know, Kendrick got him in a tizzy off of 16 that Terry made a great point that's still being in, in the heavy rotation. You know, I'm just saying, like, yeah, he, he, he's right. You know, so he's winning. But, like, with the whole Lupe thing, I think he. Right now, I don't know if any of these guys are thinking about what Lupe's talking about. I think Lupe's trying to bake Kendrick into a war with him. You know, and I, I think that, I, you know, and I I'd think... I'd be okay with that one. That, that's I, that, I, that, would, might, that might be interesting. But yeah, you know yeah. what, though? I'm a Kendrick fan. Love Lupe. If that was to happen, my advice to Kendrick would be be very... You know, <laughs> I love Kendrick, but be yes. very, very careful messing with Lupe. Don't mess with him. That's the last person you want to mess with. I will leave Lupe alone. Just, just my personal. He's opinion. a rapper's rapper. Yeah, yeah. I, I will leave Lupe alone. That's I don't even. Yeah. I don't think so, my man would go that route. Do it. I'm just saying. Nah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if all of a sudden it becomes well, Kendrick stuff is Lupe, personal. Lupe wanted to jump yeah. on people. Then I, I'm honestly here for that. That might be interesting. Yeah, but now if Lupe start dragging people, I'll sign up for that. Cause it's gonna be ve- very well done. It's gonna be very clever. <laughs> He's like, I saw you at those political rallies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, there was something else that I shared. Shout out to Lupe. Though, yeah, man. shout out to Lupe. Legend, man. Absolutely. I, st- I still think he doesn't get the peas that he deserves, but that's neither here nor there. Man, that paperwork was weird. Paperwork? At Atlantic Records. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two of the best albums like I've ever I need, heard. I need, I need, I need, his, his one-two punch was crazy. Them first two? Yeah. Because he would do stuff that was so cryptic, like you'd mess around. He, you could almost do like numerology and, and, and number ciphers on his lyrics, and he mm. was very... Jump in there long, what, you got? what was that record that he did? I don't remember what album it was on. It was either The Cool or Food and Liquor where it was like both verses were like the same thing, but he just kind of like changed the tense of what he was talking about or um, like what he was... Um, I don't remember the... Was it... It was like changed the intent of who he was talking about in a way. I don't I don't remember the name of it, but... It wasn't Hurt, it wasn't hurt Me Soul. I think it, it might hurt be... Me soul. I think it might hurt be, Me Soul is crazy. I think it might be Hurt Me Soul because that's what I was thinking of, but I don't... Hurt Me Soul is top, stupid. Yeah, yeah I was crazy. just like... The first time I heard that, I was like, wow. Like, he made something so simple, so intricate. Bruh. And, yeah. If you have it, for all My the, Cool Young History, that man, story is crazy. If you have it, please go listen to Food and Liquor, top to bottom. 
and just and the enjoy cool. and, the cool. and the cool and just and read the <laughs> read the liner notes and all the rest of it to understand the story. That boy put his foot into them first two albums, man. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal records. Uh, but I'd also put in into our chat about Lupe responded to a tweet. The post, the tweet was ends that think lyricism is all about punchlines and metaphors are the worst people to talk to. Okay. <laughs> are we talking about rap music? Well, like, th- thank you. And, and then Lupe chimes in. He says lyricism heavily includes and demands above average competence in <laughs> constructing punchlines and metaphors. Yep. If Gordon Ramsay ain't trying to hear you rave about your ramen noodle with hot dogs in it re- recipes, we shouldn't have to casually accept spectators stripping essential elements from the craft as mere trifles that can be done without. No. Take that barless nine flow delivery fest you call rap into the block. Yo. Yo. Or up the block, excuse me. I don't know even why people even say stuff like that, bro. That's a part of it. Yeah, it's. Have you guys noticed this newer wave of people that are like really standing out and like, they and I, and I feel like I understand where they're coming from to a degree, but it's like people that will say that the lyricism element in MCing just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter, and it's like overhyped. Yeah, and, we talked about we the, talked about the, the vibe. Yeah, the vibe. The other yeah, it's few episodes ago. I just, I just, I see that a lot more. Of people be like, oh, and I think they're talking about rapidy rappers in general that just yeah. rap, 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 and can't make songs out of it, which I understand. But yeah, I, I hate know. to say that people are, are being dumbed down like shouts to Lupe from top to bottom. Yeah, shouts to Lupe. <laughs> good call. Good but call. that's literally what's going on. It's like they feel like if a music has a certain element of I have to think too hard, this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Uh, they shun it. Yeah, he sends almost so they, instantly too. Yeah, they would rather hear something that that doesn't make any sense because they don't have to think about it, or something that's just more catchy. Yeah. I think this is the first time, like in since I've been, you know, partaking in hip hop, that I've really kind of seen it skewed more to the side of people more agreeing with the vibe as opposed to the the, the actual the, actual the talent and yeah. everything that's yeah. a part of it. So that's I think that's just interesting to yeah. observe. Yeah, I also have I wanted to bring this up too. I think people are are confusing what a ghostwriter is mm-hmm. with Good actually call. being a collaborator. A collaborator. Yeah. Good call. Right. Because um the reason why I bring that up is because there's been a with this whole Drake and Kendrick back and forth, somebody posted something that stated that this particular person had wrote something on Kendrick's project. Right. Um just because somebody is credited on your project does not mean if they wrote or are considered a ghostwriter. The it's whole term the, about being a ghostwriter is you're not going to be in the liner notes. Exactly. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? You got paid. You had a contract that was separate from what actually is shown to the people. With an NDA. Right. Yep. Exactly. Or it, it'll be like, you know, because everyone knows that Jay-Z wrote still DRE. Come on. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it when I remember getting the CD single when I was working in radio and I see S. Doc Carter on, on this Aftermath CD. So I knew what it was. Some of them, right. the ghost writers, they're not even really hiding. Yeah. yeah. But you like know. a for real ghost writer, like if somebody's trying to hide something, they're not going to give that person a credit. But they used because to be. Because they, they knew. I mean, Dr. Dre is not, he's never been the one writing his lyrics. Right. right. It's always been either Ice Cube or Easy or in that case, Jay-Z or even Snoop. But this is before a lot of times people would go through the liner notes super heavy. Yeah. Like, so, of course, I know what. S. Doc Carter, you know, I'm not, no, I'm not tripping. Even when I talked to the, the record rep at the time, I was like, oh, okay, I know what it is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there was a lot of times there was S. Doc Carter on stuff, and we just, Jay Z wasn't famous enough to where we knew that S. Doc Carter was, the, was, is, you know, the, the ghostwriter. Yeah. Like Rick Ross was a ghostwriter for Diddy at one point in time. Yeah. Skills is a ghostwriter for, for Diddy. For Diddy. So but voice, he, voice he doesn't well. even have credits to show that he was writing this. Yeah. Fiend, Eden Ness wrote a lot for Diddy. Fiend was writing for Trina, of all people. He was writing for a lot of not, No Limit, Fiend, wasn't he? Fiend, Fiend, Fiend did a lot and, but, of ghostwriting. But then, like, you know, because I actually, uh, at one point, like, I, I talked to Fiend, and he was like, I'll dro- I would drop hints in mm. the raps that I wrote for other people. He wrote Trina's verse for... Uh, the remix of Webby's uh, I Need a Bad mm. Mm. And you know, when he said, I dropped, I put the, uh, the lyrics, you know, the cornbread and the cabbage. So anybody who listened 
and paid attention to me putting the cornbread in the cabinet. I've said that before. Yeah, exactly. So he would drop little things in there to let people know that I wrote that. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I, the ghostwriting thing is kind of crazy because well, I, there's a lot of people that keep their lights on with their ghostwriting. For sure. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people are, to Terry's point, I think it goes even deeper. I think there's like an intentional, people are also trying to equate two things that don't equate to each other. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're trying to equate Kendrick Lamar, who has, who's openly has multiple collaborators on multiple albums, uh, especially when you think like To Pimp a Butterfly or just anything. If you just look at the liner notes, mm-hmm. lots of musicians everywhere. For sure. Yeah. And then they're trying to equate the fact that Kendrick has collaborators with ghost writing verses. Correct. And those, or just writing a verse for somebody else. And those are two completely different yeah. things. And I think. It, I, yeah, it just goes a little bit I deeper. Saw, than, I saw what Terry exactly what Terry's talking about because to defend Drake is what this is. is what it's it's all about defending. That's Drake. what it's about. And, and what what's what is said is y'all better keep the same energy. That's to defend Drake, right. but it's we not all the know. same energy. It's, and it's not. not like because now it's coming out uh, allegedly that uh, Lil Yachty has written verses for Drake. Mm-hmm. Lil Yachty hasn't been credited for those verses, but there are what are they called reference, reference, reference tracks. tracks. Of him rapping songs that Drake ended up putting out, mm. so that is Ghostwriter energy. Yeah, Facts. especially if Lil Yachty may have been listed on this album as a uh, what did he have Lil Yachty listed as on on that last album? I can't remember. I don't know. It Not wasn't either. as a Ghostwriter as, as he didn't have liner credits for these songs. So he wasn't. No, listed his as- name, like his real name, is put in there. Oh, but not as a feature, though. No, not as a feature, but like apparently. But now I don't think he is on that track. Oh, I don't know. I can't I don't know, but I, yeah. but in in the yeah, my, my, from my understanding or how I describe a ghostwriter mm. is somebody that you don't know wrote this verse at all, and you're trying to keep it that way. Right, you're trying to keep yeah. it that way. There's a whole reason they're referred to as a ghostwriter. A ghostwriter is and somebody is getting credited because you don't see it. They don't want you know you to somebody see else that does. And is this something? Do we think it's specific to to hip hop? Because like you know. We know that Jackson Five didn't write them songs. Well, we don't care because it was, you know. They I think them. I think I want to I say the term you, of ghostwriting actually came out and started with hip hop. Yeah, because I don't remember. Every, I mean, in every other genre, hell, you have uh, rap well singers have whole albums. And they didn't write look, anything on them. Look, this is literally the way the music business is set up. Yeah. When you talk about publishing, it's about mm-hmm. <clears throat> songwriters and performers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why it's split down the middle. That's why it's 50-50 like that. So it's like, that. yeah, I think maybe this ghostwriter thing, I think to your point about last week when we were, you're talking about hip hop is always built on competition and stuff like that, it became just kind of a thing that, you know, you write your own verses, you do right. your own stuff. And it just from that brolic wanting to have the respect of being able to do everything yourself, mm-hmm. that kind of create, in my opinion, that's probably where this if I were to guess, that's probably where it came from. It's mm-hmm. just the wanting to have the respect for doing everything in that manner. And I think that's as where, opposed to different genres where you know it's right. different. And I think that's where a lot of the disdain from Kendrick came from with this whole Drake situation is because it's always been a rumor that he's had ghostwriters writing for him, which has followed. And him if for you're a in the time. if you're in the industry and you know the ins and outs, you probably know. Yeah, he does have ghostwriters. Yeah, and he's parading around like he's the greatest one out here. Yeah. And I know for a fact that such and such wrote this track, like uh, when he was talking about a light pack, they're saying that uh, Dalit, Delight, or whatever his name Daylight. is. Daylight. Daylight. The Daylight. Yeah, I, think I don't it's know. Daylight. I don't yeah, know. They're I saying that he was know. low key referring to him writing yeah. for Kendrick. And he didn't deny it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he would be considered a ghostwriter mm-hmm. because he's not credited in any of this, right. this you know what I'm saying? Was the that, public knowledge. Was that, was that towards Kendrick or somebody or Cole? No, that was towards Drake. Oh, that was towards Drake. Yeah. So Kendrick said that towards Drake. Right. That that was a light pack. Oh, okay. Your best, your best was a light pack. <clears throat> yeah. Meaning that his best, Drake's best stuff was written by Daylight. Daylight. Yeah. Got you. I thought you were saying the other thing. Okay. Yeah. So, and these are people that aren't necessarily credited, but Daylight kind of alluded to. You should have right, dropped right. the other the disc. Yeah, I you know saw what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. So it's like, I'm not telling you that I'm a ghostwriter, but I'm telling but you, I'm that, telling I'm you that I'm a ghostwriter. Yeah. yeah, I saw that tweet. I just didn't know what it was referring to when I read it. So Yeah, but people, people for some reason, like you were stating, are confusing composers or somebody that helps yeah, write a song they'll see with a producer's being a ghostwriter. Name, producer's name is going to be listed as the writer. So does that mean that the producers are... 
I don't know. Look, everybody yeah. who get whoever everybody who's sampled on a record is given a writing credit there. Nice. Yeah. Anybody has any any type of participation in a record is typically given a writer's uh like i remember when they tried to come after beyonce for something and it was like look at all the writers she has for this it was, was like, like 33 bro, it was it, it was a gang of <laughs> it was a lot, it was a lot but you, ever you, know, seen, you ever seen the dale's credits take a look at her that it's super up there too yeah but they don't talk about those type of artists like that yeah but True. i think it comes from a different type of culture too to, to your point I, I, I just don't think it's looked at in that manner i think it's more of a collaborative nature in that way and i think that's the difference in kendrick's albums a lot of times too is it is more collaborative there's a lot of people a lot of more instrumental a lot of people eating off of one album as opposed to good call and i guess maybe there are other people eating just secretly on these other albums i mean who knows i don't know i remember seeing the interview with I'm never convinced Drake has written his own stuff. I'm like, no. or he's, I'm just never. You said you ain't going on I mean, that? Even with the Quentin Miller stuff, you know, and all yeah. that stuff from back yeah. in the day, you know, I, I don't know. That kind of just swept that under the rug. I, yeah. I, yeah, I know. I, you know, so I don't know. I don't really care, but. It's I don't either it's at like, the end of the day, but it's just that you can't. <laughs> but the double standard I do yeah, care about. Yeah, yeah. yeah you sure. can't, you can't be out here acting like you're the greatest thing out here. And Are you getting lobs? It takes you yeah. off of some of those lists, even the consideration. Absolutely. If, if, if we, sure. if you, got you have an asterisk by if your name. If you got a lot of reference tracks by your name. That's essentially playing with steroids. You know, that's kind of that's why. That's really what it is. I, honestly, I think that's probably why he ranked Drake Link ranks so low on our list. Mm. Realistically, because mm. he's not up there very high. Yeah, but Drake, his perception, the, the pop part of it, which people for some reason think is a diss and try to fight. I think as he evol- as he continues to perform and continues to become legendary and continues to want to be compared to Michael Jackson. Thank you. That part of him is starting to slowly overshadow the rap part. Yeah, we what do we always say? Yeah, we know he can rap, but it's the other part is the part. Yeah. That's what makes him such a phenomenal artist. It's that part. It's not yeah. the rap. For sure. So, you know, yeah. he's a pop artist. I just want to he's kinda- a good one. Kind of clear the air on the whole ghost writing versus... No, that was a good one. Yeah, that's good talk right there. Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. Loan, I want to run... The video that you shared from at Flagrant Show, I believe, on TikTok. This is, I think this conversation is really dope. I'm glad you shared that one. I want to run that one and maybe we can is it dope react in a to mug? it. Doped in a mug. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Andrew Schultz has a show called Flagrant. This is Andrew Schultz. Uh, and it's, he said the show is called Flagrant. I know it's a TikTok clip. Yeah. And he's talking about hip hop and the possibility of it perhaps losing its edge. Mm. I think the conversation is very good. So let's take a look at this one and then we can react. I feel like hip hop's going through what rock music went through. Rock music came out and it was like the rebellious, like rejection of society. And I think hip hop came in and did the same thing. It was the rejection of what you should do. Now, I think hip hop has become the predominant art form for America. Mm -hmm. And what happens with that is it's corny. Now, country's popping because it is rebellious. Liking country is like you coming on here saying you like Donald Trump. Everybody's going to be like, oh, that's kind of crazy, but also it's kind of fire. But, oh, that's crazy. Being a person that's out here like, yo, country's cool. I want to wear the cowboy boots. I'm going to wear the cowboy hat. That's sagging your jeans now. It's also, I that's think, wearing a bandana. I also that's think- putting on a grill. Acting as if you're this country <clears throat> hillbilly mother. Is a rebellion against modern, not even modern society, popular culture, which is dominated by hip hop. I also think rejection of uh, the generation before you's culture, you which is saying? dominated which by hip hop. What do y'all think about that? There's some credence to that. Think so? Because at one point, really, hip hop was. Look, I come I, at my age as being the oldest of the new old heads, mm-hmm. and coming through the system of radio. And seeing how a lot of the OGs viewed hip hop, mm-hmm. you have to understand like this music was specifically for this time. It was like, wait a minute, we don't want to lend our voices in any kind of credibility to hip hop as black people because we're tr- we're working through our own respectability uh, politics. Because here it is, like, okay, so we'll take Run DMC. We'll go all the way back to that. 
all right, here I am as a record company executive. I finally got my expense account. I got my suits. I'm coming in here and you're trying to tell me I'm, I'm, you want me to try to sell these guys who have on Godfather hats and uh, leather blazers. These dudes look like liquor store robbers to me. I'm not taking this into the white power establishment and mm -hmm. trying to say this is what I'm going to sell. So I'm going to distance myself as much from this as possible. So really, hip hop was about rebellion, not only to the white power structure, but to the black bourgeoisie part of corporate America who finally had made it to a point where they thought that respectability product politics was the way to take them to the next level. Right. Do-gooders. Yeah, exactly. Do -gooders. So now those same people who are worried about respectability pro politics, if you just shifted a little, you know, 30 to 40 years later, when you look at Snoop Dogg <laughs> as America's number one pitch man, when you look at, you know, we're, we're able to go ahead and take Megan Thee Stallion and put her on Saturday Night Live. What is rebellious about hip hop at this point? Right. You know, I don't see the rebel like, you know, it used to be hip hop would talk about would talk bad about the president, no matter who he was. Facts. Politically charged. You know, Facts. it didn't matter if he was if it was if it was Bill Clinton or Reagan, Ronald Reagan or George W. Bush. Like we didn't have no or love. Barack for the, Obama. Barack Obama. Matter. We had no love for the president because, Facts. you know, the president is always going to be against us because we're at the bottom. You know, now you people, rub people take pictures. They want to go hang out with. Kamala Harris and and play you know sexy red at 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 the, at the vice president's house, you know there's not the the Ski -ye. yeah exactly and so like now this part of me is very disappointed in hip hop and how it's been you know it's so mainstream because I come from a different era and so when he says that thing about the cowboy boots and and saying hey you know when people say I you know hey you know I kind of rock with Donald Trump that is rebel that is a rebellious spirit if you t especially if you're talking about somebody black now I don't agree mm -hmm. because I know enough about Donald Trump to where that's not a rebellious spirit you know you in you're still within the mainstream when you're talking that but for people who are not as learned you know this is like oh man he's wild he's talking he's talking about rocking with Donald Trump you know there's a lot of people who are in hip hop right now who are like you know especially if you're a part of one of is a lot of confluence of things like you talk about you're part of the manosphere you know you want to talk about hip-hop you want to talk about certain things and then like you align yourself with these conservative voices that really like all of a sudden everybody wants to be like you know what maybe candace owens isn't that bad <laughs> right. now knowing what i know about candace owens and some of the anti-semitism uh, semitic things she said when i know about her anti-blackness mm -hmm. you know yeah, they like surface level uh yeah candace so, was on the breakfast club yeah mm. exactly like you know i was like yo you did not challenge her on the breakfast club where you should have challenged her like you know when she takes up for any time a, a policeman shoots an unarmed black person she always takes up for the police it's like where were you the last seven years exactly you know. so i do see where there's a lack of rebellion in hip-hop because we trying to get to the bag because you Everybody's know every, everything because we first of all you're not selling no records because everything's on streaming you know you're trying to get these brand deals and when you're talking about brand deals and i talked a little bit about it the last in, in the last episode these brand deals are handed down to you by fortune 500 companies and so these fortune 500 companies are aligned with <laughs> a lot of these political parties and that's where their donations come from so you can't have too much rebellion in your music when you're talking about aligning yourself with brand deals because that's the only way you can get money because unless you're uh out here touring heavy and you got this real incredible which some people are some people are but you know once again you have you can't sell enough records you can't generate enough streams for you to even give yourself an independent voice what, and that's the problem with hip-hop right now what jumped out at jumped out to me was the fact that he said everything is corny the word corny goes to what you're talking about in terms of i guess anti-dangerous or not being as provocative or whatever you want to call it but mainstream hip-hop that's the to me that's the perfect word for it agree or not but I, he, I think he hit the nail on the head when he said everything is corny now. Long talked about, uh, we, well, one of y'all mentioned friendliness and how friendly everything is now and how everything is about getting a bag and I need to get this meal attached to my name or get with this Fortune 5. It's all about getting that money. The, the lack of substance, the lack of anything that would have been 20 or 30 years ago is completely gone now as it relates to this genre. Yeah, you'll have it on the underground, but for the mainstream, he's 100% correct. And I think corny is the perfect word, in my personal opinion, to attach to it. Look, when Ice Cube, yeah, I can I can agree to that to yeah. a, to a certain extent, though, mm -hmm. because I mean, even the mainstream country, from the true country fans, they say it's not real country. Okay. They say it's pop. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? So essentially we're on the outside looking into the country job genre. Sure. Yeah. So to speak. So we, might we be don't wrong. really know it. We don't really know how it works over there. Mm-hmm. I can't speak uh, on it. Only thing we know about is well, I wouldn't say the only thing, but I mean you had the uh Tracy Chapman joint that that did really well on the countryside. Yep. You had the Jelly Roll joint that did very well on the countryside and of course uh the mainstream country artists. But then you have one of the the biggest pop stars in the world has crossed over to the countryside, and that being Beyonce. Right. But if you listen to her album, it's not a hundred percent country. Say partially. Yeah. In fact, the yeah. last part of it is just stuff that was left over from the last album. It sounds right. like to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like a three part series, but I, I think it's it kind of goes back to when, remember we was having a conversation about um, Afrobeat and yes. how it makes you feel and it is I mean. It, we can accredit it to a vibe, not the same type of vibe that pe- that we were discussing with uh, rap music and lyrics, so to speak. But right. it's definitely a vibe that you feel from that Afro beat that makes you want to keep going back and listening to it and getting them record deals. I still don't think that they're going to topple hip hop, but they they're rising in the ranks. I don't think hip hop will just cease to exist and become just this corny thing that people don't rock with like certain types of rock music because you don't really hear anything about rock music anymore. Right. Like it just stopped. Or maybe we don't hear about it. Maybe because I, I, to your point, I don't, maybe there's a, but even, even like, I mean, there would be a pop rock song here and there. I want to make sure I want to get, cause long shared this in our discord. I want to make sure I get his thoughts on this actual video in terms of, you know, what you just think about, his assessment is that a fair assessment or do you have any thoughts that we didn't talk about uh no i i agree with what he said uh i also think that uh i think pop music and mainstream music in general is just corny okay by default because if you think of like what's cool in general it's typically what not, yeah, not, not everybody is doing so i think you know so i think i think there's a lot of merit to what he said i shared it just because it was similar to some conversational points that we had but i feel like he kind of um kind of hit the nail on the head with it realistically great explanation um so yeah i don't, I don't know man. Yeah, i think it's some truth to it but in in the same token like i, th- I think i kind of take for granted the type of listeners we are mm-hmm. and the type of for sure hip-hop and any genre we listen to for that, that yeah, matter. Yeah. That not, it's, not just it's not always just mainstream stuff. No. Cause like you just put me onto somebody uh, before the show. For sure. That was really dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So these aren't mainstream artists and I don't see them going anywhere as on, far as on I that can. level. Right. As far as the corny. Yeah. 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 Corny yeah. thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I, I don't think it's going to be whack to listen to that. Right. Whereas sure. when it, I rock and roll kind of took a side where just everything that came out was kind of corny. But again, even to that, we don't know, right? Because we're not rockheads like that. I was a mainstream rock person when I was a kid, mm-hmm. but I wasn't like deep in the trenches of understanding every indie grunge, you know, from every city and everything like, like we understand hip hop. So I don't mm-hmm. feel like we understand that to speak on it almost. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think it really just comes down to like hip hop's not going anywhere. Hip hop is true. not going anywhere. It's just true, like right? I don't think any of these genres, the root of the genre, are really ever going anywhere. It's just like I think the the popularity just fluctuate. Hip hop just as happens to be at the top right now, and the hip hop pop hip hop stuff that we call hip hop is just up there. So that's what's being criticized and. Sure, country pop music is going to, I think it's just the pop, it's like the dash pop on all these genres is just what that is. And so like now it's going to be country pop fighting with hip hop pop. And it's it's about to be very interesting because... And I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either, but it's about to be interesting with Beyonce and the artists that she featured on her album. They're all charting. Mm -hmm. So there were, were some black... Country artists that Beyonce featured on her album. Oh, that's cool. And I think every that's dope. single one of those artists are charting right now. Well, yeah. that's what's up. Now. That's good yeah. for them. Yeah. Good for them. What's interesting about it is I, I have this weird. Um, it's like a uh, what's like fake news. Uh, what's it called? Fox News. No, nah, well, Fox News. <laughs> well played. But uh, well played. What's the title for that title? Oh, of? Um, fake. Satire. 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 Yeah, satire. There's the satire Facebook 
uh, page that keeps popping up in my feed for some reason. And it's always like, it. yeah, because it's funny. <laughs> That's probably what it is. So it, it'll be like Luke Combs told uh, Beyonce that she can go somewhere and shove her country album up her butt. And like people will believe this stuff. And they're all in the comments. Good for him. Yay for him. Yeah. This Beyonce, I just, I'm a glutton for like yeah. that type of stuff for some reason. So I'm going through reading all the comments. It's going to be a, a crazy situation here because you got a, these black artists that are making country music popular on the black side of things. Right. The people that are the original country artist fans. And I mean, that's another yeah. story well, in itself. I, I have re- that are requests. going to be upset. Yeah. Because these artists are getting pub. Right. And like, you know how black America, when we latch onto something, we really latch onto it. So like true this summer, you can probably guarantee there's going to be a lot of cowboy parties <laughs> and parties where people were dressing up in denims and cowboy hats and Beyonce album parties, all kind of stuff all, like the album theme parties. Yep. People were about to be really upset at black America. Look at my place whole of country business. Thing. There are people we get requests for Texas Hold'em and it doesn't fit into anything that we do on a Saturday night. See? But it still go up though, don't it? Probably don't well, play it. There's a remix uh, 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 Tommy uh, Dog yeah, uh, that we, we that we can get in there. So the OG version doesn't really go off like that. I mean, it probably would if we played it. But, but y'all have y'all ever tried it yet? But what are we gonna do with that? No, she I'll got some you. other songs on her album that can actually go in the club though. But and the thing is, there there are records on there. I was like, oh, this. I, you know what I don't like? And of course, Dolly Parton said nothing about it. And she said, I liked it. Jolene, I don't, I don't like Jolene and turn into like I make that whole lean. Uh, yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I she got, actually does a lot alone on that one. Hey, Dolly actually does an interlude before the song. Yeah, come on. yeah, I did hear that, but it was just like, I, 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 how much was that? Jolene check? is one of those country songs that I I liked as before. It was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. I, so I sometimes, all right, all right, white folks, I see you. Yeah, <laughs> and you, know, you know, you know, this is the show where we we address OG classics or records that sometimes need to be left alone. We talk about that on the yeah. show. Yeah, so maybe is this one? Are you saying me, this is one Jolene of those? Jolene was fine as it was okay. before you made it okay. to something. Unless like a, you can like make it just as good. Why? You know why? Yeah. Why do you touch things? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta just leave it alone, man. Let the OG just yeah. ride out in the sunset. Yeah, but watch out for them cowboy parties. This oh, there's the, the theme like, parties is about to be den- up. Denim and boots parties yeah. is gonna hit. This denim, game. denim and trap. Watch cow. Well, it's gonna be country. Yeah, country and cripping. You got one. Stop. <laughs> This makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to be in attendance would you, to some would of these parties. Would you spend parties. one of those with a nice... Uh, Man, I don't know what to do you with that. you come through with your... Uh, I need Terry and one of them the, the tie stud with, joints. with a little bolo tie. Yeah, I would I never wear that. that tie. <laughs> but with a big-ass cowboy hat, though. I need nah, him with that. I'll wear, I'll wear a fly hat, and but some I ain't... spurs. I ain't wearing spurs. <laughs> hey, man, shouts to the homies that were way ahead of the game. John Stampson, k Yeah. yeah. That, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm game. telling you, they about to eat this summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And good for But them. now they'd be like, nah, I'm not messing with it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Probably. Because now it's popular. Yeah, it's so. like... You know, oh, everything it's goes in waves, man. It's the circle. But yeah, Beyonce and, 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 and Beyonce and her crew, it's gonna hey, be a wave. So the wave that. is not going nowhere. She's got two more acts or whatever is gonna be for this hey, series. The so hive is gonna be out in full effect. They're gonna be out this with summer. a country attire on. Mm-hmm. Better believe it. And let Jay, her announce this tour. Let Jay Moore let me find out Jay Moore is hosting a it's getting fifty pieces of silver for a Beyonce themed uh, I didn't look concert. I'm about to call a party, I, and he got I'll chaps my, on. I get my shekels. I ain't mad. Yeah. You have chap, You have chaps on and everything. Now else? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still gonna be me. He gonna yeah. be dressed like John Wayne in a party, holding the mic. Talking about <laughs> Tip Willow. <laughs> tip Willow. <laughs> tip Willow. I'll be up there. This ain't Texas. <laughs> From me, my bags. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nah, man. But that was a, that was a dope topic, man. Thank you for sharing that one, Long, because he dropped some game on that, man. He broke that down. Uh, I mean, we just kind of talked well. about that recently too. Man, no, so hip hop. I like. I like. Get, get I like to being dangerous. And I like his. Yeah, I like the spin that he put on it. Yeah. We yeah. need uh, hip hip hop to get back to being real baggy. Yeah. Uh, got to be baggy. Long. Razor in the mouth. Yeah. Bishop style. Bishop style. Come Not on. Not Bishop man. uh Birdie. I'm sorry. Birdie style. Birdie, Birdie yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. We need we need that old uh prodigy mob deep. Energy. I need to be afraid of rappers again. I'm not afraid of none of these rappers. Nah, man. <laughs> I need rappers that walk around with, with people like uh we wood, like Wood Harris, like Motal. 
and above the rim. I need people to walk. I need rappers to walk around with people like that. Yeah, or rapper, Webay. I'll take rappers. Webay where are your friends with nothing to lose that yeah. you honestly are just wild? Cards, Webay ain't have know, nothing to lose. <laughs> he didn't have anything to lose. He well, he did. I mean, his well, aquariums. Yeah. You know, so. he had his he had son in his aquarium, but he cared about the aquarium, More. the fish than his son. <laughs> from what I, that's what I took from my wire experience. He thought he was going out, <laughs> bro. And he had and he had fish, fake fish or whatever it was in jail, which I thought was hilarious. I see Bodie in BMF. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's from St. Louis. First of all, oh, okay. Uh oh. In BMF, he's from St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, I know, but they he they try to do that's like he go, hey, he uh, they try to get get he through her. Yeah, and I was like, I was I almost I almost turned it to you. Long yeah. Long was trying. I was like, he was really trying to do something yeah. with that. I was like, if you're not going to do it the whole episode, don't don't do it. Yeah, it, it was kind of hit and miss. Had, had St. Louis looking a little little raggedy, yeah, a little raggedy. Hey, real quick though, before we get out, oh of man, here. we did not talk about. Uh, I was just about to bring it uh, up, Rico Wade. Let's talk about. Rico oh, Wade yeah, before we, gotta, we get we gotta, out of here real you know. quick. Absolutely. Shout out to Rico Wade, founder of the Dungeon Family, Organized Noise. We always talk about hip hop people or producers that have what we call family trees and trees and trees of, you know. What kind of trees? Man, like inspirational trees, like happy trees. Yeah, many Java rings, spools. circular rings. Yeah. Well, if you want to do that. But um, I, listen, Organized Noise raised me. I tell Not everybody that. Organized Noise raised me. And when I saw that he passed away, that hit me a little different because I literally grew up on Outkast, and yeah. you always we always talk about that's that's something that I always bring up when I talk about them and how they evolved, especially the first three records. Mm-hmm. And he raised a lot of people in Atlanta, younger producers and stuff, and collaborate. I didn't realize that he collabed with a lot of younger people. Thought so did my research, but. I mean, he's Future's cousin. Exactly. And Future, we always talk about Future being a part of the Dungeon family, if it makes sense or not, but he actually is. Uh, but no, nah, man, I, legendary status, bro. Absolutely. No, that, that hit me too Whole because legend. When, when I talk about kind of my coming into of finding a group and sound that I really latched on to, yep. it's because of Organized Noise and Rico Wade and them. Facts. And so that, I mean, it's weird because we're coming to that age where pieces of us are leaving. Yes. I mean, mm. and it, yes. it's, it's crazy to, to even think about it that way, but it's the truth of the matter. I mean, this is life. True. Um, our makeup is kind of fading away so to speak i mean it, i mean they left a lasting impression but these are pieces of you that are, that are being taken away so i understand you feeling a certain type of way for sure because i'm i feel the exact same way um shout out to him because without him um he wouldn't have been able to uh talk to uh t boys and t boys talk to pebbles and pebbles set up that meeting with him which in turn got outcast on he's l- literally the piece that Gave the world outcast. Think about waterfalls, bro, and the story behind waterfalls and the the echo that you hear on the drums. There's a, st- a whole, even, st- it's just man, a whole story behind it. But man. I'm just saying, like that's one of those records where yeah. it's I don't know. You don't think you don't think that has anything to do with or is associated with hip hop. But to your point. He was working on back channels left and right for outcasts and for, for everybody. The South. For he literally, the South. He literally his his goal was to give the world, or uh, he actually stated New York, um, another interpretation of the South. He was like, because they hear booty Luke shake and booty shake yep. and things like that. We want to, we want them to hear the heart essentially. Yep. And he did that. I mean, organized noise is, in my opinion, one of the best production teams ever to exist in hip hop. No question. Um, so definitely shout out to Rico Way and his influence and that Atlanta sound that, that he helped put on the map, and uh, it will still remain the same. Him, Ray Murray, um, Sleepy, Brown. Sleepy Brown. Brown. And I looked, at, I saw a picture of them in the dungeon. And, you know, we always, we, we know the story. We, we were outside. We, I remember when Fab Five Freddy went to go visit yep. them, right? And it literally was dirt on the floor when they crawled down to the little crawl space. And you look at the picture of those guys, and they're young, like, Early 20s and Dre and Big Boy are like 16, yeah. 17, and they yeah. skipping school to come over there. And CeeLo is upstairs and yeah. Cujo and Tima, like, well, what? They live there. A lot they, of them. Yeah, like, they spent the night there. Like, they, Yeah, his mama was cool with everybody. Yeah, I mean, it was out. They pretty much was keeping each other out of trouble yeah. by, by doing their art. You, you, know, talk about force, yeah. you talk about foresight for the mom to be able to say, 
my boy, this boy is going to turn something into something because I got all these kids running through here and I'm feeding them. They spending the night. They're not taking showers. They, they staying all night. That's a one off. I don't know if that it doesn't have to have to happen now because technology and everything has evolved. But it might you, be a situation where that still might happen. Maybe it is. But you don't see stuff like that anymore. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's you really special. have to believe in somebody's talent, facts, and because you know, I, I mean, I, I think about my mother and the mothers I knew. Yeah, it was like, look, y'all just ain't gonna be over here all the time eating Popeye's chicken, making yeah. beats, and 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 just chilling in the basement of my house, and mm-hmm. nobody got a job. But see, I actually knew parents that would allow that, like pretty much allow us to be at their house because they know that we're not in the street. That's so, no, no, I, that's I, true. They would actually that. allow. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, they would actually like that, allow too. people to be in their home smoking weed even. And I'm not even saying like teenagers, but like, you know what I'm saying, outside of high school. These yeah. are, I know y'all are in the house smoking. Better here. I know I'd y'all rather are playing have, I'd rather video have games here. in here yep. and doing whatever you're doing in here versus being out in the street getting caught up doing that same type of thing so yeah yeah, it it definitely existed then and i'm sure it still exists now but i mean uh what they created is something else though Mm -hmm. where are we now yeah right yeah so shout out to you know and it's just like you know i know i I talk about mortality and and just living your life because it's just that's just been my experience you know when i see 52 yeah man you know, that's not old, And I'm man. about to turn 47. Yeah, that's not you old, You know, the thing is, these are people I looked up to artistically, and I'm thinking, wow. It, you know, you think about these people being so much older than you, because mm. at one point, someone being five years older than you, it really seemed like a big deal. Yeah. Right. You know, if you're 17 and somebody's 22, it's like, yo, they're living a whole nother life. Even Don't let it be 10 years. When you're 22 and somebody's living 27 and they might have a wife and kid, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you think, wow, this is a big deal. But now when you're 47, you see somebody pass away that is 52 it makes you feel some kind of way and you're like wow every day is a day you need to cherish and understand and be thankful for we get well, i think we Absolutely. all have we all have friends that are they don't frequent phone calls a lot like i gotta say that we got friends that i shoot a text here and there everything's cool some people just don't like to talk on the phone <laughs> right hi there we go <laughs> loan is a prime example i i'm i, I get to see loan every week so that offsets that right, right? so I don't take that for granted because I get to see him every week. So we cool. But I have friends that are like Lone where they're not phone people, but it's still a text message here and there just to say just to say what's up or just to check in. Because to Jay Moore's point, I have to I told myself I have to be better at that. These are the types of things that reinforce that where it's like, man, just reach out to somebody. If that person chooses not to respond Okay, cool. But I did my part to at least reach out to be like, yo, is everything good? Right. You don't have to call me back. We don't have to talk for two hours. Mm-hmm. But if, if everything is cool, just shoot your boy a line and say, yeah, man, I'm good. It's good hearing from you. Mm-hmm. I'm good with that. But Thank y'all know what I mean good. when I say that, bro, because these are the types of things that put that into perspective. For sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Or even just, you know, beef with people that you love, right? Like sometimes that happens and you look up and it's like, well, that person is gone. I got open-ended conversations that I didn't get a chance to finish. I don't like the feeling of that, right? So you can kind of close some of those things off. I don't know, bro. These are the types of things that make me think about that, for yeah. real. No, 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 no doubt. 52 no doubt. ain't old, bro. That's not old. That's no, not, no. That's not old at all. Once again, once again, about to turn, you know, yeah. 47 this weekend, so 52 Facts. is not old. That's not old, man. It's the same with the, you know, we just talked about Cole and his retraction. Mm-hmm. So it didn't fit right. Didn't want, it, didn't want it. Didn't, didn't want that energy out there. Yeah. It's the energy. Because what if that? What if that diss track is the last thing people are sure. for? Yeah. So I could, you know. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. The hip, yeah. the hip hopper in me didn't like that. Yeah. Right. And me and Terry, we talked like we were on yeah, the we same page with that. Yeah. But Episode three eighty eight four. Yeah, yeah. Go check it out. But you know, I understand the morality. I understand the grown folk part of because it. now, can't. now that he has passed away, and once again, he's you know. <laughs> we're in a situation where you could be like, is this really what we want to be doing with our lives? Right. Right. When it can all be snatched away tomorrow. Yeah. You know, do, do you want that to, you know, cause at the end of the day, I mean, they back and forth, but all these people are friends. Yeah. Yeah. All these people have worked together. Drake is on, on Kendrick's first commercial record. Right. You know, I remember, I remember Drake shouting out J Cole, like, you know, cause they were, their albums were coming out roughly the same time. Yeah. You know, you know, 
Drake and, and, and Ross have collaborated multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Great songs. Yeah. You know, Facts. and so it's like, is this really what we want to be doing when it could all be snatched away from us at any given time? So honestly, now I, you know, like I said, the hip hop, person in me the battle the, the competitive yeah. was like come on Cole but yeah. part of me was like when I see Rico Wade just be or or even Mr. C just be snatched yeah. away from us you know and we didn't we didn't know it was coming and it's like do is this is this isn't how we should be spending our time yo put some respect on organized noise name not for real rest in peace Rico Wade because like Terry said man we we was raised on that so absolutely your presence is felt my brother so rest in peace for sure yes sir I think that'll do it. Did yeah, I miss college. anything else before we get out of here? Shout out to the chat if you stuck around. We appreciate you. Appreciate the support as always. You gentlemen got anything else to say? If not, I will get out of here. Bong. Nah, nah, Bong. Yep. All right, y'all. We appreciate the support as always. Newoldheads.com for all the education you need this year. See it, like it, subscribe, share. Do not forget to leave us comments and five stars on anything that has a rating system. We nice. really appreciate it. And we will see y'all next week. Yep. Peace. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm.